oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Welcome back to the edition of Combat Corner. <clears throat> Coming on the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. We were there. BKFC 66 at the Hollywood Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Hard Rock Live. You know who else was there? The notorious Conor McGregor was in the building. He was there to see the action live, K shot. And we were there as credentialed media members for this event. We thank the BKFC for allowing us to become a part of this BKFC phenomenon. BKFC is growing, it's great, it's action packed. <clears throat> and now with Conor McGregor involved with it, you're seeing stuff happen that wasn't happening before. Before we even jump into the fights, partnership with the zone. That's a step up. So if you were enjoying those annual $50 a year subscriptions to see every fight, that will be coming to an end. You will now have a DAZN membership. Now, what the pricing will be for the pay-per-view component, I do not know. <clears throat> and what will be on Fubo or on the app for BKFC, I don't know. They have not announced it. But this is starting up next month in Spain. So big things are happening with BKFC. Not to mention fights. Good, exciting fights. Let's talk about these fights. Alberto Blas, nicknamed El Indio. He is the boogeyman. He is the boogeyman. We did have a chance to talk to Ryan Reber, who was the, the person he was fighting. Ryan Reber, great, great guy. Alberto Blas is a different animal. <clears throat> Just a different animal. You know, when people say that someone's just different, Bloss is different. In bare knuckle fighting, Bloss has a power punch that these guys at 135 just don't get. You would have to subject yourself to training with guys that are probably 30, 40, 50 pounds heavier and let them hit you with their bare knuckle to prepare you for this. Reber was ready, but Blas hit so damn hard, and he's so explosive. He dropped Reber twice in the in 54 seconds. The fight lasted 54 seconds, and nothing but fireworks from Blas. He's special, man. He is a special kind of guy. And as he told us after the fight, he just had a baby on June 30th, so his mind is all different now. <clears throat> his mind's totally different. I asked him about this. He says, what, you know, how, how did you feel about, you know, having a kid? And now how does your mind? It's like, it's totally different. He's fighting with purpose. There's a purpose now for him. Everyone says I fight for my family. But when you're your first child and you're already on top of the world, there's definitely a purpose that's now been put in front of Alberto Blas. It's so a really, he's a great dude. Um, congratulations to Alberto Blas. You know, and he got to do it right in front of Conor McGregor. All these guys who showed out and showed up Friday night, <clears throat> they did it in front of someone who can make them a star, a superstar. But that fight was 54 seconds long. Co-main event, Howard H.D. Davis. We talked to him last week as well. Howard Davis, man, he put on a show. He dropped James Brown three times in the first round. Fight got stopped. Dave HD is fighting in front of his hometown. He's from 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 Broward County, uh, South Florida boy. <clears throat> a lot of pressure. You're fighting in front of your hometown. You want to make put on a big performance. He's fighting at 155 against a guy his height. Changed around six foot two, just like HD six foot two. HD throws fast and hard. And he dropped him three times. Now, I, I heard uh, James Brown say in an interview post-fight that the second one didn't really hurt him. 
But it dropped you. It, it dropped you. And I know there were some things about some of the officials, referees, that they were stopping fights a little quick. But that fight wasn't going to look any different. HD was dominant. Incredible performance. As I said, incredible incredible performance by HD. He is ready to fight immediately. Give him a call. He's not waiting. He'll take you at 45, 55, and 65. He's ready to fight at all classes. Does not care. Now, you got the Cuban Mike Tyson, Leo Perdomo. Now, when I did my re preview of this fight, the guy he was fighting was 6'5", 290. Now, Perdomo was 5'11", 265. Holy shit. Leo Perdomo, <clears throat> this dude packs cannon power. He dropped Banks twice. Fight was over in a blink. Dominated him. Again, these three fights, you picked the right time to fight like that with Connor sitting in the stage, sitting in the stage. Sitting ring cage side, right ringside, right there. They picked the right day because Conor McGregor was talking about those guys in the post fight press conference, and he sat through the entire press conference after when they were going up there. And and you know they're all ready to roll. Alberto Blas wants to go down to one twenty five. He wants to fight for the for that belt. HD is ready to take on anybody. He says, if someone falls out in Spain, call me. I'm there at 155 for the belt. Perdomo calls out Big Ben Rothwell. He wants to take on that challenge. <clears throat> Big Ben is a bad boy. But Perdomo is packing some power. Power. Other fights, there was a good fight between, uh, this, who was this? This one was Justin Iberola. He won a decision over. Justin Street, that was a that was a good fight, good solid fight. Really exciting fight was AJ Rodriguez. He knocks out, he stops D'Amico Laban. D'Amico Laban did not come out at the end of round one. And good thing for AJ Rodriguez because he 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 shut Laban's eye in the first round, but in the in the course of doing so, he broke his index finger. That crap when he took his when he when it was so it, it was so broken he couldn't he couldn't bend like he couldn't put it into a knuckle it was like this it was so, it was jacked I don't know how he could have continued to fight it, it was like it was a compound break this wasn't something and if I think if he had hit him again it could have it was a I want to say compound would be go through your skin but it was a displaced fracture type of situation it wasn't like a just the hairline, he he shattered that thing, and and um that was a that was a slobber knocker for a round, heck of a fight. <clears throat> Improves to two and zero. Oh. Lebon falls to one two and one. Another good fight was Jeremy Smith against Stephen Townsell. Townsell wins that fight. Heck of a fight. I mean, those guys were banging, banging, banging hard, hard fight. You know, those, those were the – there was a fight early on between Kendrick Myrie and Joseph White. Joseph White got dropped in the first round, but Myrie, you could tell, was not in the best of shape. Uh, I don't know how much he trained for this fight, but he his power was there early, and he dropped White. But as the fight went on, you could see that Kendrick Myrie was not going to last. His gas tank was empty. It seemed like after round one. <clears throat> and and um, he didn't come out. I think it was round four. He didn't come back. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> uh, but overall, oh, here, this one right here. This one right here. Julio Perez con yo, the Cuban horse, improves to 2 0. Oh. Let me tell you something, man. He knocks out. Dude, Devontae Jeffrey, <sighs> bro, bro, let me see. Let's just give it to you real fast because that's how fast this fight went. 
looking to take myself to the ropes, plant my feet, and then last fat, land fast counters. Round number one, back to the ropes. By the side goes, oh, oh, Jeffrey, oh. and there's a huge. There you go. That's the fight. Holy shit. Shot Three. from Julio Perez. Four. And Jeffrey fell face Five. first. Didn't put his hands down. They're going to have to yeah, be careful. That's over, room. homie. There's this time. That's over. Holy shit. <laughs> that was all I can say. Watching these, I mean, holy shit. But really, really exciting card. Really exciting fight. Um, You didn't. You had three huge knockouts. You didn't have the back and forth slugfest. So you had some big knockouts, but you didn't have that back and forth, like rock em, sock em type fight. <clears throat> but overall, exciting card. Now, what's up next for, for uh, BKFC? They have in Spain, Mar Marbella, Spain on October 12th. You have three titles. You have the vacant lightweight championship. You have the welterweight championship. And you have the, what is this belt for? The middleweight championship. Three belts on the line. David Mundell against Danny Christie. Mundell is eight and one. Listed as number one pound for pound. In BKFC, Christy is five and one. <clears throat> so this should be fireworks. The welterweight belt between Austin Trout. Austin Trout, if you don't remember, is the former boxer, championship boxer. He beat up Luis Palomino pretty badly in their championship fight. And he is facing off against Rico Franco, who's nine and two. In BKFC. And uh, finally, the lightweight 155 belt. That's the belt that Howard Davis said, I'm ready. If you need me, I'm there. That is between Franco Ten Tenaglia, who is 3-0, against Tony Loco Soto. He is 6-0. So you have some fun stuff coming up. And uh, there's still fights that have not been made for the prelims, but you have three slobber knockers. And that will be at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So it will not be um, like the UFC does, putting it at 6 o'clock in the morning in another country. It will be at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So we will be talking about that card as it gets closer. It's a huge card for BKFC. So definitely you want to check that that card out. No doubt about it. It's BKFC on the zone, Spain. So it's uh BKFC is doing some work, man. I'm telling you, it's 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 gonna it's it's special. Jump on this train now because you're gonna you're gonna regret not seeing these fights. You're gonna regret it. And uh I had a great time, enjoyed myself a great deal, and uh, we'll be bringing you a lot more BKFC action, all right. So be sure to check it out. And I will be dropping some highlights. So check those out as well. Come on now.